back to Zalagamoto. Today I'm excited because we're finally doing our first review out of 1200. Yikes. And this video only took a month to put together. Double yikes. Well actually that's not true. Playing the game took a day or so and another day writing the review script and then finally a day to shoot, record, and edit the footage together. It just seems like it took a month because first I bought a new video camera for the non-video capture segments, bought a new microphone for the voiceovers, then I picked up a frame meister to make the video capture segments look as good as possible. Then I had to wait another week for a special RGB cable to come from Europe so I could actually connect the frame meister. And finally, picked out and licensed the video editing software. So, based on that, I have no technical excuse for these videos sucking. That will instead be a function of me potentially being pretty bad at this. There's definitely been a lot of flying by the seat of my pants going on here. Hell, it took me 15 minutes just to figure out how to set a custom thumbnail for the intro video. So I wouldn't be immediately scaring small children away when my video gets suggested on YouTube. Anyway, today we're taking a look at pro wrestling for the Sega Master System. Now, to be clear, I'm not going in any specific order when it comes to these reviews. Other than if certain games are part of a series, I'll try to review the earliest games in the series first, and then come back to the later ones after a bit. For instance, I'll be reviewing Fantasy Star before Fantasy Star 2, and that's not just because I haven't managed to score a copy of Fantasy Star 2 yet. I just feel like the reviews will build better on each other if I do that. So having said all that, I did decide to start with one of the oldest games I'll be reviewing on the channel, for no other reason than it was about time for the Royal Rumble when I started the idea of doing this channel. So what better way to kick things off than with the original Sega Pro Wrestling title. Okay, admittedly, that was a month ago, so it doesn't make quite as much sense now, but hey, I'm not letting this script go to waste. Uh, perhaps we should just go ahead and look at the game. So here's what Pro Wrestling looks like, and as you can see, it's got one of those awesome Master System covers with minimal graphics and the white and blue cross hatching. Now, I don't mind the standard design, and actually I prefer the design on the Genesis games that came out in the first few years of the system with the black and white cross hatching. but the simplistic font is just bad. And what's up with this headless wrestle on the cover? Let's get a closer look at that. Has he have his own head in a headlock? It has nothing to do with the game, and certainly isn't going to make the kids go, hey, I want to play that, unless there's seriously something wrong with him. Which... I guess you gotta have something for everyone, right? Um, anyway, let's take a look at the stuff that comes with it. Um, here is your average red label cartridge. And here is what I keep inside. And uh, I believe what happened here is I bought this from a local shop and the cover had its cover ripped off. As you can see here. And what I was able to do was I bought a lot of various Master System manuals from eBay to replace it. So I just kept both of them. And as a bonus, there's a handwritten receipt here. And I don't want to focus too much on that guy's name. Um, but this is from the previous owner who had bought the game originally from a store I've never heard of back in 1989. I think it's pretty cool to have that bit of history, so I keep it with the game. Pro Wrestling, not to be confused with the NES title of the same name, was an early release Master System title, actually coming out three months before its NES brethren. As such, it's a simplistic title that doesn't offer much in the way of options, features, or well, much of anything. And I know that probably sounds really negative, but it's actually a fun game, or it can be. The game consists of two modes, a single player mode that involves picking one of four tag teams and attempting to win three different championships through 30 rounds of play, or a two player mode that allows both players to pick a team and go at it. If that sounds fairly bare bones, well, it is. But again, remember that this is essentially a launch title for the Master System in December of 1986. And the 8-bit era was still in its infancy. 
Also, the entire title fits into 128K of ROM, aka 1 megabit. Sega was a bit ahead of the curve on this part with Nintendo, as mentioning the size of cartridges wasn't something that anyone really cared about until the 16-bit era. But I gotta admit, being able to call their cartridges the Mega Cartridge, and actually have it mean something, was a nice bit of marketing touch. Too bad the marketing department had the art skills of kindergartners. The game's graphics are pretty primitive, but colorful, and I would dare say better than the aforementioned Nintendo game with the same title. The title screen has a nice animation of a wrestler breaking through a wall that definitely belies Sega's arcade roots and attract screens, and goes into a demo mode very reminiscent of arcade machines if the player doesn't pick a game mode in about 10 seconds. The wrestlers are much smaller than the NES game, and almost have a super deformed look. And if you don't know what that is, I'm sure the internet can explain it in better detail than me. But it's essentially shrinking the characters down and making them look more cute. But it doesn't affect the gameplay. Lariats, neck breakers, and German suplexes all feel very impactful. And in a close match, you're going to be screaming for your character to get up after taking a hard hit. The four teams that you can pick from are the Mad Soldiers, the Orin Express, the Great Maskmen, and the Crush Brothers. The Mad Soldiers are direct ripoffs of the Road Warriors, while the Orin Express are definitely not the same team as the one in the WWF, instead looking more like a combination of Superfly Jimmy Snuka and one of the Wild Samoans. The Jimmy Snuka lookalike is even referred to as Dragonfly in the manual. Then you have the Great Maskmen, which are just two various luchadors, and finally the Crush Brothers, who look similar to Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, complete with Elder Crusher, aka Arn, having a brain buster in his moveset. The teams are split into two sets of teams, the heel teams, the Mad Soldiers and the Great Maskmen, and the face teams, the Orient Express and the Crush Brothers. In a great display of kayfabe, a heel team can't face another heel team, and vice versa with the faces, even in two-player mode. And actually, that's probably just a programming limitation, but I like my idea better. And if you don't understand any of that paragraph, this might not be the game for you. From a sound perspective, there's nothing to write home about. There's one song that plays the entire game, except for some brief entrance music from both of the teams. It's best to just ignore it and concentrate on the action. I guess from a positive side, you could say that the music doesn't ever get so grating that you have to turn the sound down, but one song? For a game that takes an hour plus to beat? Ugh. That hour plus I'm referring to? Well, the main single player element of the game consists of working your way through three championships. The Mexican Championship, the Pacific Championship, and the World Championship. And to do that, you have to win ten matches, or rounds, against a computer-controlled team. Here's where the game gets a bit boring. Rather than mix up the teams each round, you have to fight the same team ten times in a row, and then it switches for the next championship before switching back to the original team for the final ten rounds for the World Championship. The difficulty does get higher after about five matches, but never really increases beyond that. So when you figure out a good strategy for beating the opponents, just run that strategy into the ground and you'll have the World Championship around your waist before you know it. Gameplay is good, and even though the game is simple, it controls well, and it never feels very difficult to pull off moves. Each wrestler can punch, kick, run across the ring, and perform three special attacks. The three special attacks vary depending on the wrestler, giving the game a nice sense of variety. Also, if you're a heel team, you can go outside the ring and grab a steel chair, and if you're a face team, you can climb up to the top turnbuckle and attempt a flying body press into a pin. Also, depending on the wrestler you choose, your special moves may include submission attacks or attacks that turn into pins, adding a bit of additional strategy to the game. All told, for a wrestling game in 1986, this is a pretty great effort. I'm giving it three stars, because yes, it's primitive, but it is pretty fun, and the two-player mode allows for some nice back and forth. And there you have it. View number one is in the books. I've got to say that putting this together was a fun learning experience. I've messed with video editing a bit over the years, but finally putting some money into it, investing in proper equipment, software, etc., and then sitting down with a clear purpose was something totally different. And yeah, I know this episode certainly wasn't perfect, but things can only get better from here, right? Join us next time when we take a look at Bill Walsh football for the Genesis.
Until then, whatever you enjoy playing, have fun, and be excellent to one another.